Hey, what's up everybody? I'd like to welcome you to another Juice tutorial. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to create a visual interface that the user is going to be able to use to connect with the piece of data that we created in our last tutorial. So as you may remember in our last tutorial, we created this game parameter that sits in our audio processor value tree state. And so we see that we have this audio parameter float, it's called gain, goes from zero to one with a default of 0 0.5. And now we need to create something visual on the user interface that the user is actually going to be able to uh, change to control this parameter. So what we'll do is we will go to our plugin editor.h to get started. And before we get started, be sure to check out our community on the audioprogrammer.com forward slash community. It's a great place to connect with other audio developers of all levels. So we have everybody from teenagers all the way to professionals that are doing this professionally for some of the biggest companies in the world and everything in between. So check us out on the audioprogrammer.com forward slash community. Also, if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, uh, consider joining our Patreon on patreon.com forward slash the audio programmer. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a gain slider. So I will do this by saying juice uh, slider. I'll just call this gain slider. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the editor and give this just some parameters. So we could just say gain slider uh, set slider style. And I've gone over this in previous tutorials, so I won't go through this again. Uh, so we got juice, slider, slider style, rotary, horizontal vertical drag. And then I will say gain slider, set text box style. And then I will say juice slider text box below. And this will be read only. And then we'll give it a width of 100, a height of 50 pixels. And then I need to make it a child component of my main component. So I do that with add and make visible. And we just put it gain slider there. We'll give it a little position by saying gain slider set bounds. And then we'll put it in the middle of the screen. So we'll do get width divided by two minus 100. And we'll do get height divided by two minus 50. And we'll give it a width of 200 and a height of 100. That'll put it in the middle of the screen for us. Okay, and we'll have a look at what that looks like in a little bit. So the next thing that we want to do is now we need to connect it to our data. So one thing that you may notice if you've seen our slider tutorial is that I haven't actually given this a range or a default value. And the reason that that is, is because that's actually going to be defined by our parameter. So the parameter is actually going to relay to the slider what the minimum, maximum, and default values are. Okay, so now we just need to create the connection. So what we'll do is we will go to our plugin uh, editor header file, give ourselves a little bit of space, and now we will go to our juice documentation. So this is the class that we need to create that actually attaches to the, the slider to the piece of data that sits in the audio processor. And so this is the audio processor value tree state slider attachment class, okay? And as we can see from the description, maintains a connection between a slider and a parameter in an audio processor value tree state, okay? And we see our default constructor here uh, where we have the state that we need to use. So it says, it asks for an audio processor value tree state object so or a reference to one rather and we can see that if we go to our plugin processor header file that we have our audio processor value tree state object here that sits there called apvts 
The next thing that it asks for is a parameter ID. Now, if you remember, going back to our parameters, that the first argument that we gave is called a parameter ID. So it's just asking for that string because what it's doing is it's going into the audio processor value tree state, then going into and looking for the parameter ID that we're asking for. And the final argument is the slider that we want to connect it to. So we we're just going into our list of parameters. What parameter are we looking for? And what slider do we want to connect that parameter to? It's really that simple, okay? So there are a lot of things that are happening under the hood. There are a lot more complex that are keeping uh, sync between different states and so on and so forth and keeping, uh, keeping threads in sync, but I don't want to get too deep uh, at this point in time. So what we need to do is we need to create a slider attachment. Another thing that I want to call to your attention is that it has in the detailed description this little bit of information where it says, uh, when this object is deleted, the connection is broken. Make sure your audio processor value tree state and slider are not deleted before this object, this object being the slider attachment. So one thing that I'll tell you, uh, and this took me a while to learn, uh, I don't know if anybody ever actually explicitly tells you this, but uh, the way that classes are created, so when this test audio processor editor is actually created, uh, what happens is that it creates from the top down. So if I had two sliders here, let's just create another one really quick, that this one, if I say this is one and this is two, then it creates from the top down, meaning that gain slider one will be created before gain slider two. Now, when the when this class destroys, so when you delete the plugin, when you close the project, so on and so forth, then what happens is that the order of deletion is in is from the bottom up. So gain slider two would delete before or destroy before gain slider one. Okay, so it goes from the bottom up. So with that being said, and knowing this piece of information that says when this object is deleted, uh, the connection is broken, make sure that your slider is not deleted before this object. Do you think that the slider attachment should go below or above the gain slider? Okay, so remember that objects are destroyed from the bottom up and we need the slider to outlive the attachment. So if you said that the attachment needs to be below the gain slider, then you're correct. Okay, so the attachment needs to destroy itself before the gain slider. So what we'll do is we will make this a unique pointer and the we will make it a unique pointer of type juice audio processor value tree state slider attachment and I will just call this gain slider attachment okay so there we are and now that we've done that we just need to actually allocate the memory using make unique so the place to do that is in our constructor okay and so what we can say is gain slider attachment equals stood make unique that's what actually creates uh, or allocates the memory. And so the type of memory that we want to allocate is of type juice audio processor value tree state slider attachment. And then in args, we just need to give it the arguments for initializing this, which is all of this. So we need the first thing is audio processor value tree state and state to use. So as I was saying before, the plugin processor has an audio processor value tree state object. So that's what we need to get access to. Now, how do we get access to this actual object? Okay. Uh, so this lives in a class that's called test audio processor. So this is something that took me a little while to figure out when I was first starting. How do we actually get to the audio processor value tree state object? So if we look into plugin editor 
dot h below our gain slider attachment in line 31 we will see that there is a reference and we know it's a reference because we have this ampersand that happens after the name of the object and there's a reference to a test audio processor called audio processor so a reference to an audio processor means that when you see this line of code line 31 this isn't actually creating an audio processor okay it's not creating a test audio processor this is actually just referring or pointing to a piece of memory that already exists uh, of type test audio processor so so if we think of our plug-in processor or our, our uh, test audio processor class it's been created, it's allocated all of this memory where all of this data sits, like the audio processor value tree state and so on. And so that's sitting in a piece of memory. And now all we're doing is we're saying, hey, there's this piece of memory that exists, it's a type test audio processor. And now I'm now I want to be talking about that particular piece of memory. Okay, I'm not creating a new piece of memory, I'm just talking about that particular piece. And that took me a little while to wrap my head around, but the earlier that you're actually able to understand that concept, uh, the smoother your journey into learning C++ will be, because that's really what it's all about. It's all about uh, pointing towards particular pieces of memory. Uh, and so that's how we're getting access to our audio processor value tree state. So with that being said, our first argument, which is going to be our audio processor value tree state argument, is going to be audio processor, which is our reference to the plugin processor uh, that exists. And now we have access to the audio processor value tree state because if we go to the header file, we see that in our public uh, section of our class, we have this audio processor value tree state object sitting there. Okay, so that's how we got access to that and how we can call it there. The second argument for slider attachment is the parameter ID. So as we said before, we have our parameter ID. So it's just a list of our parameters that the user is able to modify. And this particular one is called gain. And so that's how we will refer to it. So it's basically saying, go into our audio processor value tree state, which is essentially our list of all the parameters we can hold. The parameter we're looking for is called gain. And then the third argument is the slider that we wanna attach this parameter to, which is called gain slider. And that's it. That is all that we need to do there to attach that visual element to that piece of data that sits in the plugin processor. Those two things are now connected. And I will now open this plugin up in a DAW to show you what I mean. So here we are in Ableton and I've just opened up the plugin itself. As you can see, the name of the plugin is called test. And we see that we have a dial here and the dial isn't as big as I would like it to be, but there it is. We see, we see that it has a default value of 0 0.5. And if we look into our plugin processor right here, we see that that's the default value 0 0.5. And now it should have a minimum value of zero and a maximum value of one. And so if I turn the dial all the way down, we see that it has a minimum value of zero, maximum value of one. So we see that that has worked and that that connection has been made, okay? And if we take a look here, just opening up this little panel, we see that we have our parameter name called gain there, okay? So that's how that, so that's how those things correlate. See, we have the parameter name called gain and that's how that's made. And uh, if you're asking, well, how do you actually open up your plugin in, uh, in a DAW? Uh, normally, once you build the plugin, it'll put it into the right place where you can actually open up your DAW and you should see it there. Normally, it's under uh, normally it's under the plugin uh, company called My Company, uh, but in my situation, I have it as the audio programmer, but it's there for you. So you can see that that connection has been made now. 
So one question that you might be asking is, how do I actually get this parameter back out and return it as a number that I can use alongside any other DSP that I'm actually creating? So that's a very common question, and I'm going to show you how. So right now I'm going to do this in the process block in the audio callback, and this is uh, I'm going to console out the value to the console. So uh, so you're going to see it in the console down here in the bottom right. But generally speaking, consoling out in the process block is something that you do not want to do. OK, so don't do that in the process block. That's a no, no. We'll discuss that a little bit later. But it's one of the things that you generally don't do. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do it anyway right now. So. Uh, the the command that we or the method that we want to actually get our parameter back is called uh, so we need to go to our APVTS uh, object which is once again the audio processor value tree state so that just holds the list of our parameters and then we have this uh, method called get raw parameter value and then we just need to tell it what uh, parameter ID that we're looking for. So in this case is gain. If we command click into get raw parameter value, we will see that it returns what's called a stood atomic float pointer. So that's quite a bit for a person that's just starting off to actually understand what needs to happen with that, how to actually get that value back. But I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So what we could do is we will just create a quick variable right now called G and we'll set it equal to what this returns, uh, which is going to give us a stood atomic float pointer. And then what we need to do is we can use the, uh, since this is a pointer, we need to use the arrow and then to actually get the value back, we can use the command called load. Okay, so that's how you get actually get a value back from a uh, stood atomic float pointer. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it a step further and I'm going to do stood C out. And I'm just going to console out this, this value to the bottom right hand corner in the console there. Now what I've done is I've set up my uh, X code to actually build and when it builds successfully it will actually open a DAW where I can actually debug this plugin live. Uh, this is something that I haven't covered in any of the previous tutorials yet but I will show you in the next tutorial how to actually do this uh, because it warrants a separate tutorial. So now we're in our Ableton and I'm just going to load this plugin it's called test and as we can see I've fixed the dial so it's a little bit bigger now and we have this uh, we have this value that dis that's displaying so this this audio callback this process block is calling again and again and that's why we're continually getting this value of 0 0.5 that's happening in the console and we will see that as I change it that the value actually changes okay so that's that's how we actually get that value back OK, like I said, consoling out within the process block is generally uh, or always, in, as far as I know, frowned upon. Uh, but in this particular case, I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes to show you how to actually get the value back uh, when you're actually trying to take it, take the value and use it for uh, use it with your DSP. So that's everything for this tutorial. And in future tutorials, we'll be talking about things like how to actually open up your plugin uh, when it builds successfully in a DAW to, to be able to debug the plugin live and also about different parameter uh, types such as uh, being able to do an audio parameter choice where you're actually able to select between a couple different options, uh, uh, a button that may turn on and off like an audio parameter bool and uh, other parameter types like that. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, uh, please like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.